What's up, Forge family? Happy Friday. Dr. Nick Smith, sports physical therapist and strength and conditioning coach. Today, we're gonna continue with the Forge Fundamentals series and we're gonna go over the hip hinge. Now the reason why I want to go over the hip hinge today is because it's used in everyday life. Something simple like picking up an item from the ground or if you're trying to pull a heavy deadlift, the hip hinge is super important. Not to mention if you're talking about the rehab continuum, learning how to hip hinge could be the difference between you having back pain or not. And being able to optimize that is gonna make things much more painless. So when I'm first introducing the hip hinge into anybody's program, I like to start it with using some kind of PVC pipe like this. Now, there's a large variety of different positions we can start with. You can start in tall kneel with both knees on the ground. You can start in half kneel, which is one knee on the ground. For the sake of this video, I'm just gonna start in the sitting position because we're gonna slowly work our way up from the sitting box squat all the way up to a traditional deadlift. So all you need is some kind of stick. I'm using a PVC pipe, mobility stick, broom, um, anything you have that's straight like this, this can be used. It's just as a matter of using it for proprioception. So essentially what we're trying to do for this setup as I sit down on the bench here, is I wanna make sure that all the major three contact points of my back are in line with this. Now, I also use this as an assessment to see where the person is necessarily breaking down. Is it an issue at their neck? Is it an issue at their thoracic spine? Or is it an issue at their lumbar spine? So even though the pain might be here, it might be driven from another part of the spine. So even though the pain might be here, it might be driven from another part of the spine. So to set this up, essentially what I'm looking for, I'm putting one hand to contact point on my head, another in my thoracic spine between my shoulder blades, and then the last one, which is often the hardest for most people, is being able to get it flush with the low part of your back. And I'm gonna flip my hands here so you can see this but I basically put it on the top of my waistband. Now, if you can see, if I zoom in, there's a little bit of space here. And I wanna make sure that that space is completely closed up when we're performing this drill. So that's gonna be the starting point using this stick. So you can do a really simple exercise from this bench position, just simply getting the three contact points of our head, thoracic spine, and lumbar spine, and then just simply bending forward and coming back. This is the hip hinge, go figure. So we're getting this hip hinge forward and backward. Now, if you wanna make it a little bit more active, we can keep the contact points lean forward and then use our feet to push ourselves away. And this could be practiced actually, even if you're not having back pain, this is something that you can practice before your lifts, before you're about to deadlift, before you're even about to squat. All of these would be a really practical way to warm up and get ready. Now, once we've kind of mastered that and we feel like we can do it pretty easily, I'm gonna start incorporating that hip hinge into an actual squat itself. And so we're still gonna use this PVC pipe as a kind of feedback for us to kind of feel, hey, is my low back or my thoracic spine or my head still in contact with the stick throughout the whole movement? If I feel that gap, that's where maybe I'm not getting as much spinal stability as we need during a specific part of that lift. So we're gonna set ourselves up again on the bench for a traditional box squat, three points of contact, and I'm going to simply come forward, stand, down, up. Like I said, there might be a certain part of that movement where maybe your chest comes up too high or you know, your, your neck comes off the stick or comes too far forward. You can kind of use this as an assessment tool for yourself to know what part of the squat you need to practice more with and make it more efficient and hopefully less painful. Now the next progression to this series that I really like to implement for those trying to perfect their hip hinge is to actually do a straight pickup from an elevated position. So in this case, I have a couple plates stacked up with a kettlebell on top. And this is gonna kind of mimic maybe a box that you would pick up from the ground or whatever may be in your household, but you could use this as a way to kind of perfect this hip hinge strategy. 
So essentially, if we have it elevated, you can modify this as much as you want. You can make it super tall, so the hip hinge is really, really, you know, doesn't have to be super deep. And you can slowly work your way down to the floor to where it'd be a traditional pickup. So in this case, I have a slight elevation, and I'm gonna perform basically the same, the same cues that I would before as I did with the stick. I'm gonna think about keeping contact of that stick of my head, thoracic spine, and lumbar spine. And I'm essentially going to sit my hips back to pick up the item. Once I create tension, simply stand up and bring it back down. Now, if you can see here, my spine is relatively straight. I don't have too much of an arch doing the twerking thing. I'm not doing too much of a rounded back and my head's not jutted too far forward. So I'm keeping things in relative neutral. Now the spine doesn't need to be in neutral during all of our lifts, but it's a great way to kind of train it for everyday life. So when we do implement it with a heavier lift, we have a good position to start from. So I'm gonna do this one more time. Item is basically over my midfoot like you would be for a deadlift. Arms are gonna come straight down, hips come back, spine stays neutral, push into the floor and stand up and put it back down in the same spot. Now, the more advanced version to practice your hip hinge strategy is to simply do your lifts. So I kind of gave a little bit of an elevated position. Now the barbell is a little lower than where my hand placement was with the kettlebell, but this ultimately is gonna show whether your hip hinge strategy is essentially efficient. So what I commonly see with a deadlift setup is oftentimes there's too much of a squat involved. And if you're too far forward, in order to get the bar path to come up vertically, you have to essentially like, you have to pull yourself backwards to get in that groove. Now, if you do perform a hip hinge effectively as you should, as we've been practicing with these other tactics, you'll notice that your setup for the deadlift is gonna become much, much more efficient. So if I set the bar up over the middle of my shoelaces, arms come straight down. I'm basically bending my knees till I get to the bar. If I set myself up, my spine is in a good position and I simply stand. I'm back down. I'm not squatting too much. I'm not bending from my back, but I'm using kind of a combination of both. Setups for everybody on their death of is gonna be kind of individualized, but for sake of this video and the hip hinge strategy, essentially what I'm just gonna have you practice is, can you bend down to the bar? Once you get there, that's your spine position. Imagine that that PVC pipe or stick is on your back, get tight, stand, and back down. And the bar path, if you were to video yourself, should be the same going up and going down. So as I mentioned, the hip hinge strategy is something that's really important. It's something that we use all the time. So to add this into your forge fundamentals is, uh, it's incredibly important and it seems almost brainless, but being able to squat and deadlift with an effective form and putting your body in the best position to perform it, not only will it enhance your lifts, it's also gonna help you keep more pain free. I want you to be more pain free. I want you to be able to participate in the activities that you love to do. So I hope you guys like this video and we'll see you again next Friday for the next one.